Hey, it's Swiggy Gone Bub here. We have a quick short story novel. Uh, this is entitled The Zombie Leaf Blower by Swiggy Gone Bub, Gone Bub Productions, copyright 2023. This is chapter two. Chapter one uh, was entitled J Rod. Chapter two is called Power. J Rod wanders outside. Likewise, inside of his dreams. As I wonder, songs will ooze through my mind slowly, as if an undead DJ mixes annoying. I wonder, wonder who, 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 who wrote the book out loud. Some of my zombie powers are unfair, and some are. Regular people can't see me at all times. After a kill, my zombie power in nature rules. I meander through the privately desolated streets. My mind is a cacophony of fragmented thoughts and memories. I'm also a working zombie. My Echo PV 9010T forces debris to the brink. The immaculate uniform, a peripheral camouflage, is a pass to blow everything, everywhere, at all times of the day. Jose's soul trapped in a decaying body, forever caught between the realms of life and death, at least it seems as such. Fleeting moments of clarity pierce through the fog of my decayed consciousness. Get it done. I vaguely remember my past life, fleeting images of loved ones and places I once called home. It's like flipping through a Jalisco travel pamphlet. Those memories slip away like sand through my rotting fingers leaving only an eerie sense of loss and longing. Fuck it, he thoughtfully reasons amidst his inner turmoil. In this perpetual state of confusion, I'm driven by a primal instinct, an insatiable hunger that gnaws at me relentlessly. Flesh, yes, I'd like a flesh combo, please. J-Rod stood in the drive through window of McDonald's, fogging up the mini door with his death-ridden breath. He's not speaking. J attempts ESP. The mill smiles at the grass curler guy in the window. She thinks, I hate this fucking ass job. I'd like to come here dressed up as a thug dude and rob this bitch. She smiles at her co workers. Where do I get these ideas? She snickers to herself. Beep, beep. Her drive through headphones alert her as to the next customer on the little outside speaker. Click. radio frequency hump up doesn't cease to be annoying through the white noise the patron returns give me your number hon please she says please repeat your order sir she smiles into the headphones the guy senses a leaf blower standing in the grass to his right side staring at him awkward moment j-rod gives him his back he fingers the blower then delves back into work and thought it's not a hunger for food, it's not the same, but a craving for humans that I can't quite comprehend. It's as if there's a void deep within me, an emptiness that can never be filled. I don't get full, I don't vomit from overindulgence. I stumble aimlessly, my feet drag on the pavement in succession. Other times I move quickly and stealthily. The sound of shuffling is silent through the dirty, dusty streets. My eyes, vacant and lifeless, dart around, searching for something that I cannot name. Then I mumble. Jose searches for your life, Guillermo. There is this unearthly echo in my voice sometimes. It's as if there is a mini-me next to me that moves me to say evil things. The world around me plays on a distant, surreal landscape, distorted through the haze of my existence. The public has a new meaning. Though I'm a mere shell of my former self, some semblance of emotion lingers within me. I feel flashes of sorrow and despair, a mournful awareness of what I have become. Yet, those emotions are fleeting, eclipsed by the relentless urge to continue wandering, cleaning, hunting, and not necessarily in that order. The world has moved on without me. I am now a shadow, a ghastly figure that elicits fear and revulsion from the few who still inhabit this forsaken realm. 
There are people that see the undead. There are humans that know for a fact we exist. They look at us and look elsewhere as if they don't want to feel as crazy as their psychiatrist reports them to be. I do not belong here, yet I am bound to this plane, unable to feel rest or salvation. Occasionally, I encounter other wandering souls like myself. The fellow zombies equally lost and disconnected. There is a strange camaraderie in our shared existence. A silent understanding of the torment we endure. They're unseen also, sort of. Individuals squint in our direction and then shake their heads. We're here, motherfucker. When I eat your asshole, you'll see. J-Rod giggles deeply. Am I wondering? I pass by remnants of the life I once knew. Abandoned homes, shattered windows, and crumbling buildings are all around Buildings only look that way when I'm in my daydream state of mind. At night, I haunt them, blowing leaves and shit. It's a cruel irony that I'm surrounded by fake life while being trapped in a state of perpetual death, undeath. What the fuck ever? In that moment, a homeless lady is standing directly behind me as if she morphed out of a shadow. I snatched her quickly. She didn't scream either. At least not until I craned my neck. We fell behind a green dumpster. Sweet smells of old fish grease and rotten eggs penetrated the air. I craned my neck at a 90 degree angle. Then she screamed. I relished her salty neck. I licked it. Her neck was a fat burrito. Her neck innards ran, dripping on the broken boxes. Death wiggled out of her body. Tattoos all over her. I sucked her decapitated rib cage. My hearing volume turns up when I feed. Birds are flapping their wings really hard. No footsteps are approaching. None notice the carnage behind the dumpster. The zombie lord gets it done once again. He blows the garbage into a corner. He uses a box lid. The trash pile is ladled into the dumpster. It's all good. PB-9010 idols like a super bike before Mona 1. Amidst the chaos of my thoughts, there is a faint glimmer of hope. Progress is nothingness. A distant yearn for release from this eternal limbo. It remains just out of reach. A distant star in a dark and infinite void. So, I continue to wander, groaning, a lost and tormented soul, forever grappling with the tattered fragments of my existence. This bleak, desolate world, I am but a wandering zombie, haunting specter, destined to roam without purpose or peace. Then, no, I can't have a goal. I will find you, Gmo. That bum had a new phone in her pocket, an Apple iPhone 15 Pro Max with a glow pink case. No one liked code either. Still, it had unlimited internet. A news podcast discussed a woman. I was found. She supposedly been raped and kidnapped. Jay scrolled to see her picture. It was her. Why in the fuck is this bitch familiar to me? He cries out loud. As I scroll, the taste of my recent prey lingers on my tongue. A mix of primal satisfaction and conflicted emotions wash over me. My instincts guided me to kill, to feed on the flesh of a living being. I can't deny exhilaration of the body, the rush of adrenaline as I snatch my prey, and the primal joy of the kill. Yet, now the frenzy of the events has subsided. There is a moment of introspection that follows. I am a predator, a creature designed by nature to hunt and consume other beings. The living is a role ingrained in my undead program, an ancient dance of life and death that has played out for eons. As I gaze upon the image, I can't help but wonder about the life that once thrived within it. The memory fades into me. You're a busted asshole, Schroeder. A college girl said that. Or a yacht, a naked pussy hole, the marina, those five guys. I remember that day. I hate those women. That can't be one of those bitches. This is Jay Rod Reasons, audibly. Despite his recognition, I know that my nature dictates my actions. I am part of the delicate balance of nature. 
a cog of the eternal cycle of life and death. My survival depends on consuming the flesh of others, and in doing so, I intensify my own false existence. iPhone rings. J Rock drops it. It doesn't break. He stomps it. It doesn't break. J Rock turns the phone volume down to mute and shoots it into the dumpster. Three pointer. Jose leaves the scene and blends in with the shadows, slowly, studiously, seriously. As the moon rises high in the night sky, it casts an ethereal glow of the world. A gentle breeze follows. The next morning, Jay finds a group of lawn maintenance technicians outside of a humongous shipping and receiving facility. He goes to work. J Rod talks to himself out loud. What kind of fuck did I use a power on that dude? I wanted to reach out to grab him, but he was like 30 feet away. Yeah, I've got his ass. Jose was trying to gain control of his discovered power. It came from nowhere. He'd blown a big pile of leaves into the street. In deep thought, he looked over his shoulder to some high-rise apartments. Hey, you there. Hey. Some dude with those paper-thin flip-flops was flopping in his direction. j Rob did a 360. It wasn't what it looked like, though. It looked like he was a confused new guy. Beachcomber boy had no idea... It was a zombie probing for any witnesses. Dude motioned to follow him. Each cover boy was fumbling in the short pocket. They walked on, sending two flights of steps into the parking levels below. He kept turning around, walking sideways, simultaneously talking out of the side of his mouth. Dude had to be high on drugs. Did he not see the skin backtracking off of Jay's face? With the perfectly kept uniform throw him a curveball that broke the bat. The PV-9010 roared. The noises recoiled off the walls. It was deafening. This of the air pushed Beachcomber Boy through the side of a BMW. The leaf blower was humming so loud that the car alarm was unheard. The buzzing went deeper. The victim's shorts blew into the crack of his ass like a jock strap. j Rod brandished his teeth. His choppers protruded out of his gaping jaws. He nibbled with the two front teeth, beginning with the victim's ankles. Life juice was sprinkled about. That spaghetti-ish nibble, nibble, crunch, break, gush, pop, slurp, crunch. The radio on the BMW blared. Beautiful weather this weekend in the city. Here's the next up. Enjoy. The deep voice radio jockey informed all of his listeners. Jay focused on his snack. The mashed pulp oozed in his throat. His throat bulged like the body of a snake, fat with a scared rat inside it. The echo blower covered any grotesque sounds. Jay jerked on his uniform as if anything could taint the spotless garment. In a few swift motions, the scene only resembled a juvenile break-in, nothing missing, although liquid DNA now turning black was disseminated in the broken glass. The car was extremely dusty. If it's abandoned, then oh well, who gives a fuck? J Rod noticed that the stereo had turned itself off. He snapped the flip flops and placed them in the bag. The between toes flip node had separated from the flop. The bag was laid next to the other maintenance team bags. The corpse piece wouldn't stink for a few hours. He went back to work. Lunchtime approached. The food truck appeared. Obviously, not hungry for tacos. J-Rod split, stashed out, left, separated himself from the lunch crew, going on break. J-Rod began to yearn the after high of consuming human flesh, especially as it kicked and screamed. Ah, uh, there's nothing quite like the indulging of my favorite comfort food. As I take my first bite, I can't help but savor the rich, gooey sauce glopping over the ruptured flesh. The moment the living touches my lips, there's a squish as the softness yields to my teeth. The sour aroma fills my senses, and my taste buds dance with delight. It's like a warm, cheesy hug that wraps around me. It is comforting and satisfying me like no other dish can. Each subsequent bite is a symphony of flavors that play together in perfect harmony. My teeth meet a delightful resistance, producing a gentle crunch as they encounter the golden plasma-coated hardness on top. I close my eyes and let out a 
velvety texture engulf my mouth. The way the flavors mingle and the lively goodness clings to my palate is like a nostalgic reunion with a dear old friend. It's so enjoyable that the time seems to slow down, as if I relish every weak human morsel. It's not just about the taste, it's a comforting ritual that feels like a reward for getting through the challenges of the day. Plight of the zombie. As I take another bite, my black heart fills with gratitude and joy. I can't help but let out a contented sigh. It escapes as a zombie moan sound that conveys the sheer bliss of this simple pleasure. The experience is both soothing and invigorating, like a silent sanctuary where worries melt away. With every mouthful, my taste buds rejoice, and I find myself floating on a cloud of zombie bliss. The eyes shut at the same time as they open. Deep meditation is a reasonable comparison. It's a transformative state of consciousness where I feel an extraordinary connection with my inner self and the universe. With closed eyes, I focus on my breath, inhaling, exhaling, slowly. I don't know how I get from place to place. As I dive deeper into this, I find myself transported to a surreal realm beyond extraordinary reality. It's like <clears throat> entering a cosmic tapestry where time and space blend into one. The journey feels like a mystical adventure, guiding by unseen forces that gently lead me forward. In this dream, I encounter vivid and symbolic visions that hold profound significance. These visions often reflect my subconscious desires, fears, and dead emotions, offering me opportunities for healing and self-discovery. I see myself in various scenarios, surrounded by archetypal symbols or interacting with powerful entities representing different aspects of my psyche. The dream transcends individuality, allowing me to experience a deep sense of interconnectedness with living beings and the deceased. I experience subtle threads that bind everyone and everything together, fostering empathy and compassion on an unprecedented scale. In this altered state of consciousness, time loses its grip, and I sense as if I've spent eternity in this dream realm. There's a profound feeling of being both a tiny speck, a vast cosmos, and an essential part of the grand tapestry of existence. Amidst the visions and ethereal landscapes, I encounter moments of deep tranquility and clarity. I feel an overwhelming sense of inner peace and gain profound insights into the nature of reality. Solutions to complex problems become apparent, and I'm filled with a sense of purpose and meaning in life. Nourishment from food never produced anything such as this. I carry with me the wisdom and profound experiences gained during the dream integrating them into my daily life. The dream remains etched in my memory, serving as a guiding light during challenging times and reminding me of the boundless potential of the human spirit. Every time it wears off and I realize it's just an undead slump, passing out so to speak, then it starts over. Let's get it done. I was swiggy on book Combat Productions 2023 The Zombie Leaf Blower